gather this day in a spirit of welcome for all. Our liturgy is the work of God, so it is always magnificent. And this day, particularly special for Asher Nunn, who will be receiving the body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion for the first time today. And so we're very happy for you and for all of your family and for all of our parish. We gather in the spirit of welcome for all joining us live stream, and for all here present at 1700. And of course, we begin with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism, that we may rise with him to newness of life. Recalling our baptismal faith, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. For, and we are truly united with Jesus, who is the true vine. And may these waters remind us of our commitment to serve as Jesus served. Yes, please. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We praise our God in song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good ever-living God, constantly accomplish within us the Paschal mystery that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. They were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord. from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this. We should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him, and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Peter.
Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every barren branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. Speaking thusly, Jesus draws on the religious and cultural heritage of his people. From the Hebrew scriptures, images of God as gardener and Israel as vineyard were very familiar and calling himself the vine. Jesus identifies himself with his people and makes it clear that the life he brings is from God the Father. With Jesus as the true vine, Anyone can be grafted onto him, regardless of social status or race or anything else. This may present a couple of challenges. One is the challenge to accept the conversion of another person someone we knew in their former ways. Consider the account of Saul's arrival in Jerusalem, following his exchange with the risen Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. We read, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him, not believing that he had become a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles. And he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Luke 
who compiled the Acts of the Apostles referred to St. Paul by his former name of Saul as a reminder that the greatly feared one who wanted to destroy the early church was now a firm ally and a staunch proponent. He had been grafted onto Jesus, the true vine, and would become the greatest of missionaries. Another challenge is the challenge to welcome a person of long-standing faith who has just arrived. Ask people from just about any parish if theirs is a welcoming parish. And they will say, yes, yes, we are a welcoming people. They are not the ones to ask. Ask the person who has recently arrived if they have arrived at a welcoming parish. Apart from glaring, totally unacceptable reasons, such as prejudice based on race or social status, a lack of welcome could flow from the inadvertent exclusivity of cliques. Using the imagery of vine and branches, Jesus teaches, remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. Jesus did not exclude anyone from becoming a disciple. He even called a mistrusted tax collector to be an apostle. He did not tolerate the aspiring cliquishness of James and John as they asked to be seated closest to Jesus when he would come into his glory. The branches of a vine reach out by their very nature. Most rightly, then, outreach is part of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, the true vine. This outreach entails both including those who cannot be present to the community, as well as including those who present themselves to the community for the first time. We should be attracted to them like bees are to honey. Using the imagery of a vine, Jesus, and its branches, believers, with the Father as vine grower, the Gospel according to John emphasizes the value of closeness to Jesus. This happens in our liturgy, which is not only something that we do, we are like the players. The liturgy is the work of God. And what God does is what God has always done. Reaches out to help us become better, more Christ-like people. A better community, improved by an enduring relationship with God in Christ. In this past year, restrictions associated with COVID-19 have minimized necessarily, and by our own reasonable choice for the good of all, 
minimized our personal interaction in so many ways, including the welcome that's usually experienced in our gathering space before and after our celebration of the liturgy. It will be so good when we can return to the way we know is best, as welcoming branches of that true vine, which is Christ Jesus, so that minimalism may not become our new virus. That would be horrible. This will be a challenge, not just for us, us but for all parishes and dioceses all over the world. Avoiding the, the minimalism which is now necessary. Here at St. Mary, we have a rich tradition of implementing the liturgy envisioned by the Second Vatican Council, calling for full, conscious, and active participation in the liturgy by all of us. In the past year, this community has gladly welcomed Many who have come here, especially because of the way we wear masks and disinfect fews, pews and, and keep a safe social distance. When the time comes that the lifestyle we remember returns, I hope that those of you who have come here for safety may stay here for the whole message and the ministry. The whole experience of parish life and spirituality that we have come to know and love here at St. Mary. Jesus is our vine. We are his branches reaching out in service, in welcome, in mission and in ministry. As branches of the true vine, we lift up our prayers. We pray for the church. Oops. We pray for the church. May all who join to the Lord Jesus in baptism be led to the Father, who is the vine grower. We pray to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and all who call it home. May we understand each other's distinctive religious, racial, and ethnic backgrounds as blessings to be cherished in a diverse society. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our risen Pray for all people who are hungry and without a home. May they be assisted by the many people who support Helena Food Share and Family Promise. We pray to the Lord. 
Gracious God, you are the vine grower. May we who are united to Christ, the true vine, bear fruit that lasts as we pray through Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hand for the grace and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, and in this time especially, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed. Integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. And so, with all the joy of Easter, every land, every people exults in your praise. 
Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy then these gifts, we pray. Send your spirit upon them that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life. We offer you the chalice of salvation. We offer you thanks and praise that you've gathered us here, calling us worthy to be in your presence, worthy to serve you and to serve your people. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all the lay faithful, the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember, too, our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome to the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we too may be co-heirs to eternal life, to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
Let us pray with confidence to our Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look then not on our sins, but rather on our faith as your church, and grant us this peace, your peace and unity in accord with your will as you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should return to me, but only so the word of my soul. We 
receive the Lord in our hands this day, that we become the hands of the Lord. We receive the Lord in our hands this day, that we become the hands of the Lord. We receive the Lord in our hands this day, that we become the hands of the Lord. Jesus will come again and again and fill us with his love. We receive the Lord in our hands this day, that we become the hands of the Lord. We receive the Lord in our hands this day, that we become the out with love and care we become the hands of the Lord reaching out again and again we become the hands of the Lord we receive the Lord in our hands this day that we become the hands of the Lord we receive the
For those participating in the liturgy from home, please join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. their garden beds in order at the Jubilee Garden on our property. And the Jubilee Walk is already up. So you can take a meditative stroll around the outside perimeter of the garden following the gravel path and meditating on the prayer of St. Francis and on the Beatitudes, a beautiful way to celebrate our beautiful life and weather here in Montana. Congratulations, Asher. We're happy for you and your family and our whole parish today. And as always, and most importantly, 
Jesus said it, he meant it, we believe it. Love one another. And these days, it means the clean hands, it means the mask, it means the social distance. And remember, there are some who for allergies and other health concerns simply cannot be vaccinated, and we need to be attentive to them. And not only locally, but this will be over when it's over for the whole world. You know, viruses of their nature go viral, as we say, on the social media language. But pandemic is a powerful school. It has much to teach us. It's already taken so much away from us. Let us not miss what it can teach us. And what it teaches us in a very dramatic way is that we're all connected. We all have a responsibility to care for one another. And what one does affects another person. Let all that we do affect other people for the good and for the very best. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, bless us all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. We are called to shake your bird, Lord.